Kannst du auch Continue drücken? Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, we'll be waiting a couple more minutes for everyone to join the room, to join the session, and then in about two to three minutes we will start. Hello and welcome to Japan Online Week on this beautiful Thursday morning or afternoon or Wednesday evening for those of you who are joining outside of Europe. Thank you for joining us today on the last day of our online manga and anime event brought to you by Wacom, Clip Studio Paint, Pixiv and Triple S by Aptobot. We have a great session waiting for you today with Lao Wan. But before we jump into the presentation, let me share some of the basic housekeeping rules with you all. So the session is going to last roughly one hour and we will have time for answering the questions you might have towards the end. With so many of you in the room, um, we probably won't be able to answer all the questions, but we will do our best. Please use the Q&A function of Zoom for your questions to our presenter Lavan and about the presented content. And for technical issues like the screen share not functioning properly or if you're having trouble with the audio, please use the chat box. Uh, we are all creatives and enthusiasts of Japanese manga and anime art, so please be kind and do not spam the chat feed. Especially excessive posting on the chat feed really decreases the performance for everyone, uh, constant popping ups and etc. So um, I kind of ask you to be mindful about the volume on the chat. The session is being recorded and it will be available on Wacom YouTube page. Um, during the past two days we have communicated that the sessions will be available next week. But with so many of you are asking and saying that um, this whole session has been, this whole event has been so inspirational for you all, uh, the videos will be available tomorrow. You will also receive an email next week with links and additional information and some special offers from our sponsors. If you are new to Zoom, please do check out the gallery view and the speaker view options to find the best viewing experience for yourself. Click around freely, you cannot break anything. And you can also adjust the slider between screen share and the camera feeds to find the ideal settings for your viewing pleasure. So, who we are? The organizers of this event, 
For those of you who don't know Wacom, we have been around for about 40 years and we are pioneers of the digital pen input technology. Every time you need to work or create on a computer and realize the mouse or trackpad is not going to do the job, you might want to switch to a Wacom tablet. And for the rest of you who know us, it's so nice to see you all here again on this third day. This session is brought to you by Clip Studio Paint. Those of you who have been following our online sessions in the past few months are already very familiar with our growing partnership with Clip Studio Paint. And now I will let Joanna do the introduction. Thank you very much. So for those of you who don't know, Clip Studio Paint is versatile graphic software best suited for drawing and painting to create a wide variety of content. With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustrations over comics to concept art and even animation. No matter if professional or hobbyist, Clip Studio Paint's natural drawing feel, along with its comic features, is loved by artists from around the world. It is also the most popular software among users uh, on the Japanese artist community, Pixiv. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of Pixiv, we have Pixiv and Triple S by Applebot. Uh, Pixiv is a social network platform for the artists that focuses communication through their artworks. It was launched in September 2007, specializes in artwork publication and communication based on the concept of make creativity more enjoyable. They have now over 50 million users and growing strong. You can visit and join the amazing community of Pixiv on pixiv.net slash en. Our other host for this session, Triple S by Applebot, are a group of creators that define themselves as the unknown value. They are on a mission to reveal and define unexampled values to the world. As the name Triple S, Sign of Sense Studio, suggests, they utilize our individual sensitivities and project them in the artwork that they create. The last two pieces before we start, we have an amazing offer for you all. By using the code JAPAN15 during the checkout on Wacom Europe eStore, you can claim 15% discount on the following products, including Cintiq Pro 24 and 16, the, the Cintiq family, our brand new Wacom One with the Lamy Pen Bundle, along with Intos Pro M and, and Intos M with the Bluetooth. Take a note of the code JAPAN15 and check out the eStore after the session is over. We also have another exclusive offer from Clip Studio Paint and I will once again let Jonah explain. Thank you. So for everyone who's interested in winning a Club Studio Paint Pro license, we will have a quiz at the end of the session um, with one question and everyone who answers the question correctly will be able to enter into a raffle and then will receive Club Studio Paint Pro license for Windows and, or Mac. Um, we will inform the winners uh, roughly next week. So make sure to participate, stay until the end and participate in the quiz. We will also um, have a campaign that you will be informed uh, of by Wacom um, like soon, where you can enter into winning a three month license for Clip Studio Paint Pro Windows for Windows or Mac. So make sure to look out for that email as well. Thank you. All right, time to start. Today we have Lawan with us, and Lawan was one of the very first artists when we started our Europe webinars, and he's a big fan favorite among our community as well. A lot of you have asked for his return to our sessions, and he was so kind to accept the offer. Lars will show us how to paint lights from different directions, and without taking any more of your time, I will let the stage to Lars. Uh, hi, um, <laughs> I hope everyone can hear uh, me. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my name is Lars, or Lauvan. Um, I uh, have been drawing for quite a few years now, as you can see, 14 years. Um, I started, I think, um, with, with some Kingdom Hearts fan arts and yeah, now I'm actually presenting like uh, um, tutorials and stuff like that on YouTube mainly. And um, also, um, yeah, I'm going to show you so how, how to do uh, different light situations in this webinar. <laughs> Um, Just one last screen share. Hi, screen share. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, okay, to, to give you a, a short introduction, what's going, uh, what I'm going to talk about um, in this webinar, I thought I might um, use a recent drawing of mine as an example. And um, yeah, it's <laughs> I, it's actually started as this. Um, it's a photo I took of a sketch with my phone, and um, then I did a line art on top. Of course, like it's a bit, it was a bit more work than that, but uh, it's a quick demonstration. 
So I used the base and then I added some shadows there. And from that, I could work on and continue to elaborate it. And what I'm going to talk about in this webinar um, is essentially this step, um, well, this one. So we're going to have a look at how to create a basic sketch for the lighting you have. Um, and also to essentially make it more usable because it's not just cell shading in a way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope that was understandable. Okay. Just, just um, a quick question, you can go ahead. Um, um, you, you showed your photo and then you showed the line art. How many sketches did you do in between? Oh, a lot, a lot. Um, so when you do um, sketches and, and um, create a line art, usually for me it takes like, I guess, maybe five or four approaches to really end up with a good line art. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be uh, discouraged <laughs> when you, when you uh, don't really get like the first perfect line from mm -hmm. um, what you're drawing because it, it takes a while. Do you just use like one of the regular pens? Do you have a favorite brush for that? I um, I do have like, I mean, for this one, I used uh, a G pen. Mm. And I think there is like one pen that is more, um, more, yeah, the, the real, <laughs> the real G pen. It's in Germany. <laughs> um, but the real one, it's a bit more crisp. I also have like a, another uh, brush a friend gave me. So I don't know where she got that from. But this one is what I used for, for this drawing. So it, mm. this is more crisp, which um, as it shows, like it's uh, more pixelated. Um, that makes it easier <laughs> to um, get the right line in a way that when you erase it, you don't end up with like different layers between. And then, I know, it just um, yeah, made my workflow go smoother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, didn't mean, mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, so <laughs> I, I just I continue, uh, I just uh, explain what I'm doing. Here. So I, I have to had the line art and I choose um, like with the magic wand, I made a um, selection of the inside of the line art. And on different layers, I co uh, colored the different um, things like hair and skin. And it's usually always uh, a thing that gets really messy because <laughs> usually I just start with one where I use also the magic wand to select something. And then from that, everything that is underneath gets covered by what I selected here. So you don't really have to be for the hair, for example, be as clean because you just did one clean thing. Um, and on top of that, to work on our light situation, um, I create a layer that is um, a slight violet or, or like a yeah, muted violet reddish tone. I chose this one because um, I, I in, in a tutorial video <laughs> that I did recently, if you uh, want to check that out at some point, um, I talked about when you have like um, light uh, and you want to add it to your painting, you have kind of a rule. It's not really a strict rule or something, but it's something you can go by to create interesting effects. That is warm light, um, gets you cooler shadows or cool light gets you warmer shadows and violet is somewhere in between. So if we have like later on um, a warmer light source, then violet will appear cooler. <laughs> and when we have a cool uh, light source, because of the red in the violet, it will be warmer. So it's flexible really. And um, yeah, with that, I use a layer mask and this one is really, really helpful. So with the layer mask, I can now get into the drawing and sketch in our light or our light source. And for the first light source, I chose to do it from the top. And this is essentially like very free for all. As we have a layer mask, it doesn't really um, give us like the anxiety of messing up because we can already, uh, always redo it. And as we have a light source on top, I um, use a very soft airbrush and just, yeah, roughly <laughs> do a spotlight on top. And um, that is like the um, thing that gets us started because now we have, okay, 
a light source from top, we can think about where it would hit as well. And that is the nose probably, oh, wrong brush. The nose where it can shine through. And so we're going to use a little light there as well. But sometimes, I mean, you notice it already probably, um, it's also good to have like some variety with your um, with your edges. So I have for the nose a really hard light spot there because I'm using <laughs> wait I'm zooming in uh, a sharper brush. And what I can recommend is essentially that go with the combination of everything. So. It's sharp here and I can use um, a smooth uh, brush or smoothing brush um, and try to make this soft around here. So it gets a bit more of dimension in a way. And the same goes for um, the hair as well. So this one looks quite boring at this point <laughs> because it's just an airbrush there and we can just draw in more shadows. And I have some um, some things drawn in. Let me just, let me just put this one, yeah, this is sharper. All right, I have some help with my line art there because I have some places that I drew in some um, folds of hair, like some creases that I can use and make darker now. But um, also I want to, draw in some lights. And for that, I use the eraser on, on the layer mask and just go in and erase some sharper edges. And that <laughs> you have to continue for a few of those hair strands, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I am open for questions. <laughs> <laughs> um. A lot of people probably want to know, like, how do you know where to put the light? How do you know where to put the light? Um, it's, for me at least, um, I, I treat it like Sudoku in a way. So I just try to, um, so, so with some things like if I, I have like um, a hair strand here, then I can think like, okay, if the light comes from above, then I might do a shadow that goes like this. But if you have, uh, if I have to, um, yeah, draw in lighter spots, for example, it's mainly random. It's as we work on the on the layer mask, it, it's not that much of a problem if something looks odd because either you can just uh, go back, <laughs> the ominous step back, or you can maybe just overpaint it and, and just say, okay, no, I want it darker. Um, but yeah, it's it's a figuring out. Uh, after all, it's uh, there's no real rule. Um, I yeah, it took me quite some time to really get into that mindset because I struggled a lot with that as well. Because I um, do a lot of watercolor works as well, and there you really you have to be focused. If you mess up, that's uh, <laughs> something where you you want to have everything planned out from the beginning. Um, but with digital art, you really can let go a bit and. Um, I mean, for example, I have um, a habit if I encounter places like this um, where there's a different, different lines meeting, I usually go there and put lights at those spots because I think, okay, they might come out more if I have some light source there or some light, lighter spots there as well. Mm. Do you have any... Um parts of a face or or the body where you think that applying light is really difficult for you? I struggle a lot with lighting hands, <laughs> <laughs> the different fingers, because you have to have like a really um, a feel for pipes in a way. So you have to have a dry dimensional brain or something. I don't know. Like, I don't really work like a, a processor or like a, a sometimes imagine like uh, gaming computers do something like that. Um, so if you play, as I put it, Sudoku with hands <laughs> and try to just figure out that that can take a while for me at least, like that's something where I have um, quite the 
um, learning to do. You have a favorite part to, to, to draw? Usually the face, because um, as you can see, like it's a, just a light spot there and it could be enough. I could also go there and say like, okay, I might do some, some spots there as well. Like for, for the light situation, the face usually is the easiest in my, in my uh, experience. Um, but also uh, I really love to, to do hair because this uh, is quite um, uh, a relaxing exercise. If you just have a mind that it's okay if it doesn't look good, <laughs> so it's like, okay, I can redo it. Uh, and yeah, basically it's a bit like oil painting where you can overpaint and stuff like that. It's not as frustrating and you can get away with a lot when you do hair because it's not like there's, uh, especially with manga art, that there's mm. um, a lot that people go there and say like, oh, I, I think this is wrong. Like the light shouldn't be there because it's so much detail that you don't really can go there. <laughs> Do you use um, any sort of references for really difficult light situation? Yes, and I um, also like in, in general, I just can recommend using references. It's something um, I, I started actually by uh, just copying um, with a pencil from manga books that I had at home. And um, that's why I also like, uh, I've seen those redraw challenges uh, at some point. Oh, there's some, some device going on. Um, <laughs> I, um, I've seen those redrawn challenge and I often, I'm a bit sad because I have a lot of just, yeah, I copied the whole manga page, for example, at some point. Um, oh, and wow. I can't, I can't do a redraw of that. But on the other hand, uh, you really learn a lot from that uh, in regards to proportions and to, to seeing distances. That's something that I really have like, or I had to learn that, that when you um, try to develop a sense for proportions, then it's a lot about different uh, distances, uh, like the distance between the eyes and the distance between the nose down there and seeing triangles and shapes like that everywhere. And um, yeah, if you, if you start by uh, using references or as I did in the beginning, like uh, copying even, um, it gives you like a good sense. That's of course not to say that you should just upload it and don't tell anyone. <laughs> so if you, if you use it, um, like especially if it's copied, then um, you should state that otherwise it will get a bit nasty, but um, yeah, for learning purposes, I really recommend it. And if you end up doing a bigger drawing, a bigger painting, and for example, not everyone, like how could everyone know what a tiger looks like in detail? So if you want to have like a tiger face somewhere, then I would definitely recommend using references. That's the way I would approach like a topic like that. <laughs> mm. Do you use more especially for for the manga style anime style art um do you use more real people for references or more manga style art um artwork from other artists um i think that's uh, depending on what i'm going for like if i go for right proportions and something that that looks anatomically correct then i would go more or would tend to use more real people as reference like for hands for example I usually do a lot of photos of my own hand that's why uh, every time I get asked to do a tutorial on hands that's something very difficult because a hand looks different from every angle and usually I take a picture of that I mean I could maybe explain how that <laughs> works but <laughs> imagine it would be boring um, but if I go for a certain style, like if I think, I don't know, like uh, the movie Akira or something, if I want to have something that looking like that, or uh, like the Final Fantasy characters like Tetsuya Nomura, um, then I, of course, would look up his her, uh, work and um, yeah, try to figure out what makes it uh, so appealing and what I can incorporate in my own work. Mm -hmm. Let's see already getting so many questions. We already have like over a hundred questions. So. <laughs> um, I, can, I can go to the, to the next step now because I think for the hair illusion, this is enough. 
but we can also have more um, like add a little color pop in there because uh, this is like for the light situation I didn't put much much thought about the colors but um, I thought we can or we might add like some of the subsurface scattering so I take a vibrant orange and as we did now um, have everything on our layer mask uh, erased I don't really have to worry if I if I paint now over the lines. So this step is really quick. You can just go there, use different brushes, um, and uh, just draw everything in. Oh, there it is. Uh, this one. Okay. So as you can see, I'm just now on the layer of the um, of the shadows because we erased the highlights. And from that point, we can very quickly just get a fancy <laughs> saturated line on every shadow. And this leaves us also to the option to just maybe smooth things out so we don't have to have sharp lines everywhere. Um, we can also just uh, yeah, use everything to our liking. And if you think maybe here, for example, if we have another sharp line, just repeating it looks also kind of special. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's here, for example, with the nose, that's something I like to do a lot. Just put it there and then use an airbrush to get it also there a bit. might soften it a bit more. And I mean, that's that's the reason why I go, like to go for, for layer mass. And another trick that also is not just depending on, on layer mass, because you can do that with any layer, but um, something that really is helpful to do is uh, just create um, a selection of what you did or what, what's on the layer. So I can go on the, on the layer mask, selection from layer and create a selection. And now we have stuff selected and invert the selected area to have just the, the highlights there. And then I can go, for example, use a yeah, soft airbrush and maybe create even more light to it and then that I could do that basically with <laughs> everything. And then you have even more choices to, to go in there and uh, even work, work more on top. But um, yeah, that just is a side note. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I'll just do some more lights there. And then we can go with the next light source and this will be from down. So we will have a light that's coming from down, down there. <laughs> yeah, okay, the next step again is uh, creating like another layer and set it to multiply. And then we will repeat what we said just from, from down there. And have a look what difference it does. <laughs> Layer mask set up, that's something, again, not really a good thing to forget. And then we can start with a soft airbrush again. But this time I am not putting it on top, but I'm putting it down there. And yeah, <laughs> start working from there. And as you can see also, if you, if you combine soft edges with uh, sharper ones, it actually already creates something. With manga drawings, you really don't need to go um, fully to the um, extent that you would maybe shade like a real person. So some gradients and some harder shadows often are enough um, to create some sort of depth uh, with those characters because that's something I struggled a lot um, that I didn't know where to stop. So I would usually go the full way and just 
shade everything, maybe even use like a, a picture of myself as like a color pick reference. So I would have like a manga drawing there and then the picture of myself and then just, okay, the color on my chin is this, or I put it there and the shadow here is this and then just put it there. But it's, um, yeah, depending on style really, uh, you can also go with a rougher set. It's, it's easier. <laughs> That's like one of the advantages and it works just as well. How do you avoid overworking shadows, putting in too much detail? Do you have any tips on that? Um, it's hard because I tend to sometimes overwork hair, for example. Um, I mean, as you can see, like it's, it has more details than the face and that can, uh, if I have the right mood and if I feel like, okay, it's going somewhere, um, then I also tend to make it so detailed that you really have to zoom in to see something. And that probably is, would be my recommendation to, to zoom out and then, then you can check whether it already works. But on the other hand, there's also something um, that's really depending on your style. For example, if you have a more um, um, a more detailed style or, more, or let's say a more sketchy style, for example, you don't do line arts and you try to overpaint um, your sketch more, then this can really be appealing too. Like a lot of web comic artists that, uh, do that, like have a very uh, sketchy style so they save a lot of time and effort and um, have like the focus on the story or the emotions that uh, usually are really, um, that take just a few <laughs> lines to, to express um, the emotions of the character. And um, if you go more into the illustration route, um, which is something that I did or do still do a lot, um, it's also not really wrong to, um, yeah, go a bit into the more detailed look and um, maybe like find your balance. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you have to make mistakes uh, at a certain point to really grow and, and um, yeah, see where, where, where your passion is. How long does a picture like this usually take you? Like the, the one you showed before, the finished artwork with the, oh. with the colors. Um, so this one, just let me put it full back, took, I think, about two days. Um, so two days, probably six hours each, 12 hours, I would say. <laughs> just rough <laughs> estimation. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, really like if you have um, a vision of what you want to do. So if, if you know where is it going, uh, where this is going, because I knew like the, this is uh, the OC for my friend and he had like this transparent, translucent hair that, that got things started. And from that point on, I um, had like a proper vision of what this is going to look like in mind. And um, from that point, you work towards that goal. But sometimes you start something and you don't really know where it, should end up. That's what uh, why I like to do those yeah, light situation sketches more or less. Uh, because from that point you can um, already decide like okay um, what 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 looks better for for my purpose. What is like okay is this interesting or more interesting or, or yeah whatever. That, that's, <laughs> that's sometimes really helpful to to um, yeah just play around and um, then you can get somewhere. But this of course takes time and then it can end up a bit longer what you're, mm -hmm. what you're doing. What do you think took the most time in that image? Um, probably uh, getting that goo right. <laughs> 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 that was something, um, I mean, I, I used uh, the, the Clip Studio uh, fingertip, wish finger, the, the, mm -hmm. the thing that usually you would use when you start drawing a lot for doing shadows, but I used that for the glue. And um, yeah, that, that was quite helpful, but also hard to figure out like that, that it doesn't look as bad. <laughs> <laughs> How do you usually structure your layers when you do a piece like that? 
Um, usually I go with, um, I think face is the first thing. Um, because if you, uh, so, so my, my way of doing it, um, I try to address it shortly in the beginning. I go there and use uh, the, the magic wand. And if you do it for hair, then you end up with a lot of shenanigans there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do it for the face, then you have to click every single sheet uh, thing of this, like this one, I forgot. And then you can, oh, well, that's a wrong layer. Oh, it must have to be here. Um, and then you can just, um, you have to do it just once. So this is the face. I just picked everything with the magic wand there. Have this layer now clean <laughs> and set up. And then underneath for the hair, I don't have to pick everything, but I can just use a giant brush, go all over it. And then, um, yeah, because we already created like these edges. And again, like you can also go there, create a selection from what you did there, um, invert it and also um, put it here and delete it this way. And then you have it cut out basically. So yeah, in the end it doesn't, it's, it's okay. It just go for what, uh, yeah, saves you some time. <laughs> do you usually work with a lot of layers or do, pre do you prefer to work on fewer? Oh, that can be a lot of layers. If, if I go for like a fully fleshed out background, um, that can be a lot of layers. Uh, oh, what's it doing? Okay. Um, yeah, usually I don't really count. Like I start to notice when the computer starts to heat up <laughs> that it's like a lot, but um, yeah, probably above hundreds. Oh, wow. That, that is a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, speaking of computers, could you just quickly mention what your setup is? Like what computer you use? I am... Um, um, using actually um, um, a vacuum mobile studio pro because it's uh, i can transport it and that's uh, what this is connected to for the for the webinar <laughs> so, so you're connecting your screen tablet to, a to screen another computer. one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the tablet you're using right now is a bit bigger right it's bigger and also um, the screen of my other one has a crack and that wouldn't be like as accurate for, <laughs> for demonstration purposes. So I thought, okay, I don't want to be shamed. Now I told it you <laughs> anyway, but yeah, the other one has a crack. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're, you're drawing the light from the coming from the bottom right now. Um, yeah. So this gives the whole thing a very ominous look, like that guy's a bit evil. Yeah, it's shady. It's like <laughs> you're sitting at a campfire and now telling you a story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take this kind of thing into consideration when you choose your light? Yes. Um, usually there, there are some, some light situations that are more um, like neutral. Um, like f from the front, which I did in the in the last webinar, um, and, and later change it to like also from a bit above. Um, but there is like uh, the the light that is here. Like this is kind of usable for anything. This one has like a story in itself. So as you said, like you, you notice that there is something a bit stranger because you can't really easily explain the situation as something that um, happens like out of nowhere. So you couldn't just put like trees in the background and, and a blue sky or something, on, but you would go maybe a bit darker and uh, have it more themed like maybe campfire maybe has a match uh, in his hands or something like that. Um, but um, Something that I, if I uh, can, maybe with the next one, uh, that is also working really great is uh, something that is light from the back. So if you have like uh, the sun or something like behind his head, so everything gets like this nice um, white rim light. Mm. 
me see what else. Um, if you want to make like a really dark scene, um, do you put in more shadows in, in a setup like this? Or do you just make everything darker? Um, I would try and make everything darker and then try to put the lights on, on a few spots that where you want to focus to go because um, that's something, yeah, that sketches like these, they can help, but that's also depending on what you want to convey with the painting. Um, because usually I like to have it, when I use a dark light situation, I like to keep it a bit mysterious. <laughs> and for that, not having everything illuminated um, works, I guess, uh, better. Mm. And you have also like a nice effect, like that's, that's catching the eye or the attention. So okay. you have, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to say like, okay, I, I, I checked the time. It's a bit time. I start with a, with a light from, from, from the back of his head. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, by far, you probably know the, the drift. Um, use another layer with the soft um, violet tone or mutant violet tone, set it uh, to multiply and also clipping mask. Um, and use another layer mask. And then we can start erasing our lights again. And if the light comes from behind, usually it, ha it creates like a very sharp rim light around the whole character. And that's something that you have to figure out a bit where to stop because I also tend to go overboard. For example, you can put it there on the hair, <laughs> but they also like to put little details on the teeth in there. So everything looks a bit more um, detailed and therefore a bit more uh, interesting. But yeah, it's basically, as I said with the last ones, uh, great to um, have a combination of sharp and soft edges. And for this one, very sharp edges work really great. But also, if we smooth out some stuff, <laughs> gives it a bit more, um, that feel that light is wrapping around the head. Do you take a lot of liberties with adding light to just make things look cool? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's um, the the freedom of art, if you will, that you can um, go all over the place. If you think, you, if you like it, um, then I, my opinion doesn't really have to be that accurate. I mean, um, usually like the rule is that if it's um, like naturally accurate, like the light situation, you don't really question as much because it looks right. And then you don't think like, okay, this is off. Like, okay, I, I'm not sure if like the artist really knew what they were doing. Um, but if you um, already have the option or the opportunity to just be the illuminator of the drawing, <laughs> then you can, I think, or you're allowed to just go all over the place. And if you like it, then go for it because in the end it's your drawing <laughs> and it shouldn't really matter if like someone I mean there, there would be like a weird maybe maybe in art school or something that would be a weird critique when somebody says like oh drawing is good but the lighting damn <laughs> uh, let me check more questions there's still many still many many more um there was one question regarding how you would approach multiple light sources. So with, how would that, you go about that? I mean, the thing is you could, you could go here, for example, and, and create or maybe make two light sources out of there. And I would probably like from left and right and just expand like the single stuff that I did here, for example, maybe also create more light around the nose stuff like that and um, 
to make it more apparent what's going on, I would usually use different colors like to, to make the different light sources distinguishable. Um, but yeah, that, that it's quite a complicated thing. I usually would recommend you to um, look up references <laughs> <laughs> because this is like, again, like, I mean, we are not computers and it's not like we could render stuff in real time. Um, so I think it's really like, depending on the situation, like if you trust yourself and you, you think like, okay, it's, again, it doesn't really matter if it's accurate, that's often what I do, <laughs> um, then you can just go for it and try things out. And um, if you think like, okay, I want this to be very delicate, I don't want people to question anything about it because it should look like that, um, then yeah, just uh, go for reference. I mean, they're like the, the, the by color thing um i mean it's there, there are a lot of photos there so you can like find photos with uh red and blue light usually also maybe some youtube videos like some do that <laughs> maybe you can do a screenshot and use that or something if, if like if you search for a certain uh, angle of the face and um, because that's what i often have trouble with like you can easily say use reference but often finding the right ones is just difficult <laughs> What do you think, what, what is most inspiring for you when you draw or when you look for certain, um, um, how do you say, certain styles and certain moods for your images? Um, I, so the thing is, when I started drawing, social media wasn't as artist, um, like there weren't, a, I mean, there was no social media at all in the beginning, but um, it just slowly, slowly grew slowly grew <laughs> and um, from from that point on uh, I yeah I follow artists on Instagram and Twitter and um, get like retweet stuff like artworks and sometimes there is art where it's like little spark there where I think like oh I want to try that I want to do um, stuff like that as well I want to uh, for example here it was like that like I saw the rainbow hair and I thought okay what would my um, try with that look like and um, that's what got it started and, and I mean <laughs> it started as a sketch like this um, for the pose and then yeah it, it grew into something I mean it's, it's um, really yeah not to be afraid um, to just try things I mean you know like the, the reference thing and stuff is always a bit because the, the line or, or border towards uh, tracing or art theft can be tricky and if it's too obvious then usually should um, state that but for me it's really like often other artists inspire me a lot. <laughs> um, so you have a lot of watercolor art that looks like digital art I think that's what people know about you yeah as well um, does it also work the other way around do you try to put your watercolor art style into digital i figured for me at least that's really difficult because usually if i i mean the thing is when i see a digital art that should look like watercolor as like a user of watercolors for for years now it's hard to trick me i guess <laughs> um, <laughs> unless there are like uh, scan textures in use so where like the the roots are from uh, actual watercolors um, so I rarely ever tried it. Like for, for this, I also used some um, textures for the background and some are uh, scans from, from watercolor paintings I did. Um, so it has like more uh, bite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the other way around, I, 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 I've seen some apps actually. Like I mean, in Clip Studio, there are some great brushes, but I also saw like uh, promising uh, apps where I thought, okay, this looks in the, in the present, in the video, it looks like it could do it. But then I tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I'm, you have, like, you're in the cell shading, kind of cell shading style right now. Um, yeah. Is this your preferred method for digital or do you also like try other, like fully I, rendered? I started uh, with, 
rendering. So I was mm -hmm. very inspired by uh, Zakimi Chan. And I, um, yeah, as I said, like I, I would pick a manga drawing and then put a photo next to it and try to color pick every shadow. So because I thought, okay, this looks very accurate. And then I found another artist a few years later um, called Kavasi. And he really does those fully elaborate, gorgeous art pieces where it was an hour. And I wanted to try stuff like that as well. And then I, um, yeah, started to go more into that direction. Like I, I supported him on Patreon, learned from his tutorials. And that's, yeah, <laughs> where, where I am coming from. Like, <laughs> Okay, Let's see, we still have 10 more minutes. So, okay, um, I can try maybe a light situation from this point. <laughs> uh, oh, from, from, wait, there, from this point. Maybe like from that direction. Hmm. Because that's like the nice part about doing stuff like that when I can show, like, we can go through it and we have different <laughs> effects with every. Uh, we can even stack them on top. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we get different situations there and they are not really that work intensive. You can really quickly get like the basic setup for your drawing and then um, yeah, it can become something even more elaborate, more bigger, dramatic. <laughs> Okay, uh, I just explained like for a fourth time. <laughs> I, I, I learned like repetition is a great way to learn. So um, use a layer with the soft violet, put it, uh, clip it with your um, original uh, base layer, use um, a layer mask, and then we can start erasing light again. And this time it comes from the right side. So I would say like the side of the cheeks gets more exposed to it. And yeah, as you can see, I can just really, really quickly draw in the lights and erase it again. And with the um, smoothing tool, <laughs> you can also create like a really fine, or I mean, we can also do just, you can start sharp actually sharp here and then smooth it out here. It's all like the, the different ways you can play around with um, the layer mask without having to, to worry that you actually erase some parts that you might want to add later on. Because as you can see, we have a hair right here and I just, I just can draw it back in. And stuff like that really can make like the peel of the painting, mm. those little details. If you were to go about putting a light source of a different color, how would you do that? Um, a light source of a different color, I, I, I mean, we have everything uh, on, on those uh, layer masks. Mm -hmm. And if I just select um, the, the mask, I can go then and maybe add another color, wrong <laughs> side, <laughs> invert. So here we have like a reddish light source and then we can usually just play around. Let's try pin light. <laughs> it looks already like he's in a neon sign. Like if you have... <laughs> uh, really guitar. makes the ears pop. Yeah, really um, the, the details that didn't get that much attention in the beginning, but if we maybe do it, I mean, it's, it's a bit, bit vibrant, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe it works. So again, like the thing is that not, uh, the, that we use the layer mask really helps up preserve our, um, the work we did before. So um, if, you, if you think like, okay, I'm not sure with the colors, because you have the, the light situation sketched out on, on a different sheet and um, layer mask also again, because you can now paint on, on this thing here with the vibrant color without losing anything. So 
if you've painted it out, like um, there, there, there's nothing lost. You can just always select that and go all the way back <laughs> or use it for different light situations and stuff like that. It's totally up to you. That's why I usually, again, like it's, it's not as difficult as um, maybe going full in, like if I would go and, and show you now how to really flesh out a piece, but it's something, if you do it right in the beginning, the rest becomes easier. That's what I think. <laughs> So right now you don't, like if you, you only have your layer with where you erase the light from essentially. Um, if you were to add shadows in any of these pieces, what would you do? I would go to my base layer. So here we have like the skin layer, lock that layer, and then we can also just go in and sketch some shadows in. That, that's... Um, also, I mean, you can really go all in and try to think, okay, the light comes from there. So we have to go here and make it darker here and um, yeah, go fully white without actually hurting the light source because it's it's still there, <laughs> you can still select it. And um, this way you can, yeah, do the shadows totally uh, unharmed with, from the light. and that gives you just time to think, like time to think where it would look accurate. And uh, you also have no worries about doing something wrong as, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all like saved on another layer. Do you usually create pa uh, color palettes for, for characters that you draw or do you just wing it? I do a lot of fan arts, so there's um, in that um, direction there's like reference material where you can go with, but also I have like a little um, color palette uh, up here um, that I usually I, I really recommend having that uh, for for your work because um, sometimes you just think like okay th that color scheme from a certain painting is really nice. I pick some colors there and then you can go with your own drawing without being as much influence because that's something that can happen where you are like just very focused on getting things right. And um, yeah, I, I, in regards of colors, I usually go with a palette like this, like from the last uh, webinar, I still have the bamboo forest color scheme right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I could quickly go there. Go ahead. And create like the gradient. Oh, I already have saved it here. This way. Ah, make it a bit bad. <laughs> I, I, I like to imagine the thumbnail looking just like the last one. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have. Ah, I think there it is. Um, oh, okay. We have to have the line out. <laughs> yes. Okay. We have a background now. <laughs> <laughs> flying head in the forest. <laughs> um, that brings me to another question that was also asked, um, do you decide like where the, how the light influ is influencing the character by its background or do you do it the other way around and see how you light the background based it, on the character? It can work both ways. Um, because for, for this drawing, I had really no idea um, for the background. That was something that, that came last because I, I worked from the sketch here. Um, but then I thought, okay, I have the light source now um, set up like um, this. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, to create maybe a bit dimension, I can just create a shadow there. And then now we have a wall and yeah, wall a bit boring. So I put some splatters there because it would fit the theme with the hair. And then later on the rest comes to it. Mm -hmm. But it can also be like vice versa where you have a, like 
the idea of, of a bamboo forest, for example, and then you think like, okay, maybe the light should come from behind because I know like the, the, the sun is rising behind him or something like that. And that could be another way to, to do it like, like this in a way. <laughs> How much planning does you does usually go into these kinds of things? Um, it depends on the drawing. That's something when I have like when I work on on a fan art, for example. Um, sometimes it comes with the drawing, but um, also it can become like the uh, if, if if I I've done uh, some redraws of uh, Inuyasha frames from the anime and. Um, that was like, okay, I like anime frames aren't as detailed, but you have like a bit of a, of a, a setup. And from that, I can draw the inspiration to focus on what I want to do. But yeah, it's, it's really depending. And I think there is no real rule for that because they, they ha doesn't have to be, you can play around. And if you later on decide like, okay, maybe, I want to try another light situation then you can just go back and, and do something else because again like i mean i've done like four different things in like 15 minutes each probably <laughs> it's not as long i mean of course this is just a phase but yeah okay <laughs> um i think i think we're we're just past the hour now so i think we need to wrap it up mm -hmm. um just one last question for people starting out, do you have any very basic tips to approach a painting I or would drawing? I say don't be afraid probably because that's something I had to experience a lot when I started drawing because usually my, my uh, teacher would, or like in school, in high school, my, my art teacher would say like, okay, you can, you draw nice manga figures um, and they weren't as good <laughs> when she said that. And then she said like, but if you want to become an artist, you really need to go some, uh, somewhere else because museums will never uh, pick that stuff up. And then I um, thought, okay, um, I mean, I, I can maybe do something else then. And it was a struggle uh, to, to really, so I, I was afraid to do something else on the one hand because I, felt like I was betraying my, my personal um, interest. But on the other hand, I thought, okay, learning some more realistic style is also not as bad. And then I grew to like that as well. And the same with watercolors. And then it's like, you can try a lot of things if you are not afraid of, of doing that. <laughs> Did you some... ever want to have your, your art in museums? Um, I, I studied uh, art like university and then I thought mm -hmm. like what what is the point no <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't have like the connections and the the uh, mentors and stuff like that it's it's just uh, from my personal uh, from my experience it's not worth it because you have to really bend over and you have to go like you work more as like a salesman rather than an artist that's what I felt in university you you mm -hmm if you are yourself and it's not what they like, you have to change that. And from that point, you become a salesman because you don't really, you're not interested in, in doing what you do. You're more interested in getting into uh, galleries and then it's, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> I mean, if you're born for it, like then you go for it. But I, I mean, <laughs> manga is pretty controversial. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there are too many manga museums outside of Japan, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, there are some, some exhibitions, but I think they are more yeah. like, um, I, there was one in, in, in Germany, in Bonn, but it's then comic gen in general, and then it's more um, like, I, I think more of it like a circus, like, oh, look at this weird thing that's happening sideways, like, it feels like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, you have you have your Instagram that's probably visited by more people than was fit in a fit in a museum. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's it's great to to experience that some um, people you had struggled with in university they have now also created social media accounts because at that time when 
uh, Facebook and stuff was new, they were like very, um, yeah, frowning upon it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like the most used thing, like social media. So they have to come there as well. And then it's, it's a, bit, a, bit, a bit satisfying, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, I think we need to call it quits here. Um, we will talk about your social media and where to follow you in a moment. So thank you very much for showing all the different lighting techniques and having the chat. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much, Lars. Thank you. It was once again a super fun and inspiring uh, session from you. Thanks a lot. And also thank, thank you. you, Joanna, for for keeping the, the the communication flowing <laughs> you're welcome okay um before we go away let me quickly switch screens yes as you can remember at the beginning of the session joanna mentioned the quiz so um joanna would you like to one last time <laughs> Yes, um, so we have a little quiz and it's very fitting the theme of the webinar. So you will see a small pop-up window where you can choose uh, one of three answers for the question coming up in a moment. Um, and you can win the Club Studio Paint Pro license from that. Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in a, in a raffle and you, can, uh, you will be infor informed about your prize in about a week or uh, sorry, next week. Um, so the question is, which of the following is an actual blending mode in Club Studio Paint? Uh, is it A, a spotlight, B, the pin light, or C, the moonlight? So we hope that everyone will be participating that to, win, to win a license. And then you, of course, can make use of everything you learned today. Oh, it's competitive. Yeah. <laughs> Chat seems a bit uncertain. But they are also intrigued by the power of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait a couple more seconds. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a close one. Uh oh. We hope everyone paid attention. I mean, it was very <laughs> mesmerizing and there was a lot of information, but it was mentioned. Yeah, I sadly mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see the answers. Okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, that <laughs> was a close one. That oh, was a close yeah. one. Well. Congratulations to everyone who got it right. One of you will be the, will soon be the owner of a new Clip Studio Paint Pro license. We'll inform you by email directly. Thank you very much for participating. Okay, let's... Um, thank you all again for joining us today. Please do check and follow us on social media. And don't forget to check and follow uh, Lars. Uh, under at Laovan on his um, pretty much all of the social media channels yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, please do visit our event webpage to register for the last two upcoming sessions. Uh, right after this one, we will have um, the legendary uh, Arita-san at 2 p.m. Um, and also, one last reminder, we have the code JAPAN15 for you all to save 15% on the selected products. That's it from us for this session. Thank you so much. Take care. And bye-bye.